Hellos, welcome to Call of War, day 18 of our epic saga into the war of the Pacific and the Indian Ocean, etc. Did I tell you Mexico attacked me last night? I don't think I did. I've been at war with South Africa. Oh, look at these new fancy name tags that they included. Oh, where's, where's my little... No, oh, New Zealand doesn't get one, but China gets one. That's good, you can see what I'm talking about. And Mexico here. So, they attacked me. And maybe I should have shown you, but uh, it was kind of busy. But two Mexican naval forces, carrier task forces, were seen. One were down here by Aden, Aden. And they attacked y Yakutia's 49 unit army. <coughs> As you can see, anti air and escort ships. It's not something we bother with in Yakutia. We go with artillery mainly. Anyway, he was trying to line, land here in Buzazo, ob oblivious of the carrier group. And also, I think, eight Mexican land troops were sitting here waiting for him, uh, contesting his landing here. Fortunately, the Chinese fleet were stacked here, and I had my naval bombers and air support and tactical bombers ready, kind of ready to strike. But so we saved 32, which are badly damaged, but it's better than having them all destroyed. So that was very exciting. Let's call it the Battle of uh, Busaso. Not the most famous location in the world, but that, that was the Battle of Buzaso. That was one carrier force. The other one was sitting outside here, the Horn of Africa, Hordido, Hordio, which is now controlled by Colombia, funnily enough. I wonder what he's, do what he's doing there. I, I can't tell if he has any troops there. We'll come back to Colombia in a while, because I don't think I told you this. So, uh, China had 13 submarines or something, they took care of it, along with my naval bombers. First my interceptors took out his air wings, and so we did quite well in the naval battles here. Uh, I had a a lone scout, what's it called again? Rangers? No, they're not. Commandos trying to land in Obok, but Ethiopia spawned uh, a light tank. And even though I killed it, when I was evacuating, I, I got killed by Mexico. So I lost a troop here. Then, Mexico, when he declared war on me, he launched multiple uh, paratroopers. Three, I think, actually. These three provinces here. So he dropped paratroopers here. And I think he destroyed some uh, fortifications. And, and But they can't move for eight or nine hours after they drop. You don't see them. They're invisible. But you know they're there because they just pop up. And I just used my uh, fighters to sp to scout them, and then I used my tactical bombers to eliminate them. So that wasn't much of a trouble, but I was kind of scared that he would drop into important provinces or towns, etc., in the background. So that's a good thing with uh, I think level three forts here. When bunkers are at level three or higher, they also hide the army composition of stationed armies. So even if I don't have anything in Medina. My enemies won't know it, and they might not dare to drop there. I wonder what happens if they drop on top of an anti-air, which is quite weak against compared to infantry. German parrot Axis paratroopers had ten attack or something horrible like that. So I wonder if they attack with their full infantry value, if they could take out, or if the anti-air would fire on the approaching transport plane paratroopers first and uh, kind of. I don't know how, how an uh, opposed anti-air landing, but I'm gonna spread out a lot of anti-air here. Not that I think that he's gonna do redo that drops. Then he proceeded to send a heavy King Tiger with anti-air out here in the ocean late at night. I don't know why he did that. That wasn't the smartest thing. It was easy to sink. Uh, South Africa and Mexico were heavily bombarding. Uh, Chinese forces which have been pushing down into Sinai, the Sinai Desert and even crossed the Suez ca Canal here today. So I sent him a couple of anti-air units and, and fighters and then we bombed um, 
South African uh, forces, uh, air forces here on air bases along the, uh, the water. That's what I wanted to do rather than save this silly uh, Yokatsia army. So I had to like send my air up here and then back there. And you know, it's a couple of hours each way, so it's quite hectic and busy. But now I can focus on. See, so yeah, I I'm, I want to kind of establish a foothold on this part of the coast here, where I have air cover from my tactical bombers and my uh, fighters. So I built up uh, airfields, etc. Uh, here, and what's kind of exciting now, uh, long term, is that on the Arabian Peninsula, I have now started to produce rocket fighters in some of the towns. They are expensive to build in rares. They are also uh, take a long time to build. They have long construction times. So you need to build up the, the secret lab. So it's not a huge production yet, but right now I don't feel the pressure of the Mexican Air Forces. So hopefully that will give me some time and, and, and air power will be my strength because it certainly isn't land power. It's Navy and air. That, that is. And we have another force here with one uh, carrier with four Interceptors level 5. That's not very powerful, but it's better than nothing. Why, why am I not patrolling with them in case he starts bombing me? I, I've kind of run into this problem where I cannot find the, the air units. I mean, they are on the carriers and the carriers are is, is in the stack. But... Oh, there they... Did you see? Oh, okay, you, you hover over the unit and you drag down to the left and they magically appear. Okay. So I'm probably gonna should use these for now to just patrol here. Or should I? Yeah, I should probably scout. No, I'm gonna patrol over here because my intelligence report tells me uh, very niftily that there is a rather huge uh, South African mechanized force hiding somewhere back here beyond shore bombardment range and we know South Africa has self-propelled artillery and he had like five of them in each stack so if he has two stacks that could be ten artillery quite powerful and if I try to land here oh boy but I am I'm eagerly eyeing Mogadishu as a future base of operations with its fuel no, I, it doesn't matter. But uh, being an air base between the north edge of uh, Madagascar, being able to land here. But here's my second carrier. Oh, yeah. Have you seen it? Uh, it's heading here. And that means they have four air unit capacity. So I have a tiny air bridge going from Arabia to this carrier, to this carrier, down to Madagascar. Uh, so for now I have a tenuous uh, air transport conveyor belt kind of running around here, but South Africa has their main force in their course defending. He, uh, he lost the battle of the Middle East, remember up here in, I don't know, Gaziantep, he lost a huge amount of forces. And he had, this is what happened, uh, some one Colombia offered had offered me or had I offered them share map or something when I was allied with the uh, American hug box and he used it and so they got a good view of my forces luckily I think it was Colombia and um, you know he has to relay that information to all his allies in chat and, and that, that's you know I'm not so sure they got all that much useful information but then I realized South Africa had offered me the same and I said if you're gonna play dirty so am I so I had a couple of minutes where I could just view the exact location of South Africa and what I know for sure is that they have focused most of their forces are in the south around uh, their course and as I said quite a powerful uh, unit of 25 mechanized forces re ready to hit anything here up here on this Mogadishu coastal uh, province so 
Yes, I will. Uh, I will do a raid. I will appear. I will provoke. I will maybe try a landing because I need to support my China up here and also draw attention away from here. But I haven't really decided how to do it. I don't know. I, I'm I'm waiting kind of uh, for my allies logging on for the this today and uh, coordinating with them. I uh, maybe I should pressure Colombia to give me this province. Next thing is I um, I'm not doing much with Madagascar. I'm not gonna fortify it heavily because I think air and naval power they, they don't seem intent uh, on pushing into the Indian Ocean after the the defeat of the Mexican uh, naval powers. Not not from this direction. So just basically set up defensively um, and I, I'm hoping to get a couple of rocket fighters out as well as as kind of the Defensive air garrison of, of, uh, of Madagascar. This will more be, hopefully in the future, an offensive uh, air base operation to, uh, towards Africa. But South Africa is no pu pushover at all. He's strong on, on land. He doesn't have a lot of uh, anti-air. He doesn't have a lot of fleets. He has a lot of mechanized... What is this? Sorry. Uh, he has a lot of mechanized tank and self-propelled artillery and mechanized infantry etc so if he yeah so anyway I am also decided to garrison a bit down here south of uh, Madagascar this gives me a good opportunity to uh, round the Horn of Africa or uh, head back and protect the Madagascar or yeah so I have a little Navy force down here as well no carriers though but I have a nifty little air strip down here, so even though it's uh, it's vulnerable, uh, it is. Ooh, I wonder if I build a level three <coughs> fort field fortification. They can they cannot be level five like bunkers in towns. They can only be level three. But fortification level three also high the army composition of station arms. So if you Alright, so maybe I should, I have iron, sorry metal, so maybe I should, should I fortify this province so that if I have air units there, refueling, <coughs> they won't get hit by long range bombers, that, that, that feels a bit exciting, no I don't think I will, I'm such a cautious care bear defensive guy, um, no I, I can use the resources elsewhere. Now, obviously, oh yes, the Pacific, here we go. Um, as you remember, <coughs> USA has a very powerful navy. As far as I know, it's still in port, somewhere up here. Maybe, but maybe they're heading down south now, towards my islands. Colombia decided to, oh, I have to read this, this is so funny. Colombia decided to go like, uh, dude, give me Honolulu and I'll be chill. I'm still gonna send ships. I'm still gonna send ships to watch your islands to defend myself, but you should give me Honolulu. <laughs> and I'm just like, I was thinking of the Spartan warriors that died in the movie 300, you know, at uh, uh, the Peloponnesian Strait where they defended. They said when Xerxes asked them to lay down their arms and surrender to him because they were 300, and he had. 50,000 troops. They said in Greek, which I don't. I, I wish I could refer it in Greek, but I can't. But they just said, come and get them, or come and get them out of our dead, cold hands. So I just said, come and get them. So Honolulu declared war on him, and because he had three battleships sitting, one on each island group, scouting, they were level ones, uh, like this. And their submarine warfare is 1.4, so I just blasted those three battleships. <coughs> and then he said, "Bro, that means that means I am young, so please don't respect me at all. That's that's what you that's if you want that, you write, bro, bro, bro. Why? Come and get them. I don't want them though. Literally said just so I can defend myself." Uh, anyway, uh, I offered to piece him for a hundred thousand money. That's nine hours of money production for me. 
I never thought he would. I never thought he would accept, but he actually had he had hundred thousand uh, money saved up, and he gave it to me, and I said thank you. And the battleships were still fighting, even though we made a peace deal. I don't quite know. How, I don't know how that worked, but uh, then I think he declared war on me again to kind of see if he could re-peace me and and save his battleships. Didn't work out. The battleship sunk, and also got a transport light tank somewhere yeah up here by sand island so that was a fun little short war that netted him four losses and me a hundred thousand dollars i i like that war that was fun that was i enjoy that uh, but he doesn't seem eager to fight me but uh, i my spies tell me that he his fleet is heading over towards my islands anyways and he parked another battleship level one outside honolulu I have no garrisons, I have a few factories on these islands up here, uh, I don't want to lose them, but I can't defend them, but it would be it would be a shame to, yeah, but you know, uh, what am I going to do, Mexico has a, a large fleet sitting here, I, I just have to live with, uh, I could probably lose these, but uh, what I need to be c careful about is not losing my core provinces in New Zealand, and so I set up a, a submarine screen here, and when I get new submarines produced, from my home area, I'm gonna continue this line down here, and you know, I'm I'm building up uh, air bases, and I'm sending, I'm sending over some uh, old rockets. What are they called? Flying bombs. Um, I I honestly I know I was doing a bit of a gamble when I pushed most of my naval forces over to the Indian Ocean. I was hoping to get a decisive uh, naval battle over here, and we kind of did. Uh, getting rid of two, uh, two Mexican naval forces, uh, carry task forces. I think that's almost 40 units he lost there. They have eight air units each. That's 16, and maybe 10. Let's say 10 naval units each. So all, yeah, it's 35. So that that was that's costly to rebuild. That's that's just not for Mexico. It's very little out of his 600 units. But we, we kind of we kind of won the Battle of the Horn of Africa or the Battle of uh, Busasa. So now I am uh, sending back a small naval force. But I still have to keep quite a lot of naval forces around here, right? Because I have to defend uh, Madagascar and the entryway into the Indian Ocean. Uh, and since I can't park, it would be great if I could park, you know, this distance. But I can't. Th this is what I need to keep closed now, so they can. Uh, reach my interiors here and, and hit me from behind. Um, so, yeah, I am stretched in a two front war versus a, a superior uh, alliance, you might say. I, um, I think I will need to maybe ask China to move out his, what is this, six battleships from, uh, from his coast. We'll see, we'll see. But for now, I am kind of thinning out my <coughs> what what has been a weak um, interior defense with a couple of rockets and a couple of uh, mostly rockets and infantry actually. But and now I'm gonna deploy them out here on this island screen instead. So obviously this is not going on the YouTube uh, for a couple of days because. Not that I think that these guys are stream sniping me. I have no viewers whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> but if they were, if they were, if they were watching this, if they were watching this stream, they they would have gotten a lot of useful information. For you can buy a spy uh, for ten thousand money and put it, and then it gives you a little bit of information uh, about construction, uh, buildings, and and military units. So I, I I really wish I had even more money than I had. Talking about the economics, what happened was that someone put out a lot of fuel for 1.9. All right, I was thinking I had no new no fuel. Um, I mean, I had enough for what I was doing, but I was basically at zero all the time. So I just thought I invest a hundred thousand money plus even more, and I bu bought up a stockpile of eighty thousand fuel. And this means that I probably won't have to build up oil factories. I can focus on other type of factories. 
Yeah, or military units more likely. Just for interest, let's check my construction queue. You see, I have a lot of submarines in the building. I also have a few rocket fighters. As I said, you know, I can't build as many as I want to. Uh, then I have some infantry going apparently, mm. and another carrier. Research day 18. All oh, right, yeah, day 18 opens up. Uh, end final versions so it's kind of a hard choice takes takes like 30 hours to research them but anyway I decided to go for destroyers and uh, interceptors so this star here means that you have to find blueprints to be able to to uh, even build it so it's not it's not it, it maybe some nations in this game only can be level six, six and I can be level seven. So this is kind of a veteran reward, which is kind of nice. But once I have uh, researched this in 12 hours, so tomorrow, um, I will be able to build a lot of uh, uh, very good, uh, the best interceptors in the game. Uh, now they cost a lot of rares. Box uh, goods I can afford. Uh, money, manpower is not a problem. Fuel is not a problem. But rares is going to be my bottleneck for sure from now on. Destroyers, uh, yeah, maybe not the most useful because uh, actually, to be honest, they they are basically mostly uh, anti-submarine units. Um, and as far as I know, these guys here don't have a lot of submarines, so. I was a bit hesitant, but it is the first top tier naval unit that appears. And now I have it, and I can upgrade all my old destroyers, which is quite a lot. I don't know, 35. And I can start pumping, spamming out new top tier destroyers that I never will have to uh, upgrade again. And they have a decent anti air of 9.5. They have a decent ship-to-ship uh, -ship fighting capability of 11. They have such short range though, uh, only 20, that they often don't get to fight. Uh, they sit back, but they can protect my battleships from uh, airstrikes from their carriers. Because as we know, uh, my um, opponents are quite carrier heavy. I wish I had higher levels of uh, uh, cruisers. Because even... Yeah, now a cruiser is as good as a. Uh, but am I am I ever gonna am I gonna research more than level three of cruisers with all these juicy high tier ships? Uh, this might have been a dead end building and uh, putting efforts into cruisers. I um, I would need to to take up my uh, you know research is really a bottleneck for me now. I I um, I feel. I'm almost at the point where I uh, would like to invest some gold. Yeah, I got a bonus. I got an achievement for something, killing stuff. Uh, 4,000 gold, so I'm at about 150,000 again. But if I wanted to just progress my speed, speed up my research, not finish 12 hours, 13 hours. I just speed up, so maybe half of the, t the 13 hours. It will cost me almost 3,000 gold. I think. Uh, Spending gold? Nope. Uh, it's probably one of the most reasonable kind of game balance wise investment. And also, it's fun to have more options in a game like this. Like, you want to research. So, maybe I should just blast away and. I'm n I'm never when am I gonna use the gold? This is a fun match. This is a fun map. I'm having a good time. And I have the gold. I, I I haven't paid for most of it. Why am I hoarding it like a dragon? Because dragons like hoarding gold. And being an old fire-breathing dragon, I like hoarding my gold. Now yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe one day I'm just gonna go like, eh, I need my uh, I need my 14-hour carrier research done. Boom, money, gold, 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 gold. We'll see. I, it's 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 not like I need have to speed up research to survive at the moment. It's not. The war is going okay. I wish I had Japan and Korea, of course. For 
production purposes. Because my, my production is way lower than South America in my other ongoing campaign. New Zealand is not as strong, but it has a nice little fleet and air uh, force. Uh, 960 points and 300 units but the problem is quite a, a lot of these units are low tech armor cars rockets and some uh, uh, attack bomber dive bombers so maybe 30 of those units aren't really units a lot of them are low tier infantry sitting in cities behind the line for no reason mainly my one two three four five six navies and my air in Saudi Arabia that is that is my that is my armed forces that is what I'm using that is my strength that is what I put my uh, I was almost said IC which means industrial capacity but that's what I put my production capabilities my resources my industry into to build up the 300 units I have now I would say almost half, maybe a hundred, a third of my troops are just fluff, are just, yeah, garrisons, defensive, but these troops here in India, uh, it is nice to uh, to be, to go to bed and to know that for sure um, the evil enemy is not gonna send hidden commandos. Why do I have two infantry there? So th it gives me it gives me a nice pillow to sleep. Okay, so here's one infantry. I thought I was like I my my goal is to build up and have because it's very easy to send five low tech low level armored cars along the the, the map edge here. Just head up here into Australia into here Australia is empty right or maybe uh, China just decides like I'm gonna attack you so I have at least I have something so. oh well um, yeah uh, so maybe I should have shown you all these great battles here let's focus down here uh, China Ooh, look at that that is just a cluster he has taken uh, Hurgada, he's taken Port Side, and uh, yeah, he, he's getting a, a beachhead, a foothold. And here's another secret lab built. So that's great, and I am, as you can see by these red lines, I am. Oh, what is this? Here we have, there we go, Ethiopia. Hello. Uh, Ethiopia is hiding, they have 1.8 anti-air, so um, I'm just gonna start bombing these guys in Azab, and just to be sure, let's put my fighters, I only have 7 fighters, how cheap is that, why am I patrolling uh, with, yeah, these, they have very bad anti-air, no, an infantry attack. You know, I could do something about armor, but very little. Don't even know why I'm keeping these around. Maybe I'm keeping th these around because they have 3.8 ship. Why did I build these? Yeah, I was thinking I'm research them and upgrade them eventually. That was not such a brilliant idea. I'll just take them back. And they're not very powerful at all. Uh, all right, this turned out to be quite the long half an hour stream that I felt with a major war has started the lines are drawn and uh, we have major military action here um, we have had more military action here and uh, I'm, I'm on my way here you know all everything I'm sending into Africa will probably die from airstrikes just because seven interceptors is not gonna be enough to uh, protect. He's, he, it's so easy to just blast with a huge. God, what? Sorry. To just blast. Uh, so these are sacrificial lamps. 
but we'll see about that in uh, next stream i hope you enjoy this uh, and i will catch you in the next one bye